everyone, listen to this. Despite ISIS claiming responsibility for the attack in Nice, many are still saying that it had nothing to do with Islam. Our next guest knows a lot about the subject, and he says denying the nature of jihad will only make the problem worse. We are honored to be joined by Majid Nawaz. He's a former Islamic extremist. He spent a long time in prison for it. He's the author of a great book called Radical, My Journey Out of Ext Islamist Extremism, and he joins us now. Thanks a lot for coming on this morning. So you're aware of this. I think you live in the U.K., but here in the United States, noting the essentially religious nature of the impulses behind these attacks is dismissed as Islamophobia. What do you think of that? It's the same, unfortunately, here in many of my fellow liberal circles across Europe and in Britain. And I think there's a, Tucker, I think there's a double standard at play here. And, and, and that double standard is born, unfortunately, of what I call a bigotry of low expectations. Muslims, brown-skinned people, generally people of color, are being judged by a lesser standard, an illiberal standard, as if there's an expectation that we can't possibly be secular Democrats. And I think that's a form of bigotry. Uh, and I challenge it, um, and it's incredibly unfortunate because it leads to uh, uh, the discrimination and uh, disempowerment of the very communities these uh, uh, my fellow liberals are purporting to want to support. That is such a smart point. I hope people watching at home have taped this so they can just replay that again and again. That is really smart. Okay. Uh, but the president, on the other hand, says that the moderate Muslim community is so important for rooting out terrorism and that, that even calling it radical Islamic terror is something that will alienate that community and make them somehow not want to come forward. Why do you dis disagree with him? On the contrary, I think what it does, uh, call this uh, Islamist, the Islamist ideology and in its violent manifestation, uh, jihadist terrorism, what it does is it allows reforming Muslims within the Muslim community uh, it provides them with a lexicon and allows them to engage in that conversation to address these very uncomfortable issues that are all real and present within our communities. There are serious challenges around equality, gender rights, sexuality rights. Only today, Pandil Baloch, a Pakistani uh, singer and actress and social media star, uh, was killed allegedly by her own brother. Uh, in a so-called honor killing. These are issues that are often justified, not always, but often justified by religion. And it's why I say uh, it's ignorant to say this has nothing to do with Islam. That's as unhelpful, frankly, Anna, as saying uh, that that is Islam. Um, I think the truth is in the middle. Uh, of course, the, the, the bindingly obvious is to recognize that this has something to do with Islam, not nothing and not everything. And if we were to be consistent and apply the same standard we apply to historical Christianity. Just imagine how absurd it would sound for somebody to argue that the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, had nothing to do with Christianity or Catholicism, or that the Crusades had nothing to do uh, with uh, Pope Urban II uh, and Catholicism and Christianity. It would sound absurd, and these same liberals are the first to jump on Christian fundamentalists when anti-abortion clinics are blown up, yet somehow that standard is abandoned when it comes to my fellow Muslims and my community, and I think that, that the bigotry of low expectation can only lead, as I said, to the tis disempowerment of those beleaguered reformist Muslim voices. There are many who exist, many pay for it with their lives. They need our support. If liberals, my fellow liberals, are concerned about minority communities, they should be first and foremost concerned about those women, uh, those gay Muslims, uh, those secular Muslims who are struggling within their own community for their rights.